Well, I can't talk that fast, so what I couldn't say I've distributed on the handouts that are floating around. That's my equivalent of 20 slides. <laughs> Okay. Fabulous. <laughs> okay. I now have precisely six minutes to talk about Project 3.1, and I'll challenge myself to finish on time. Um, I'll start with keywords. An OFET is really an organic field effect transistor, no matter what you may think of it. And it's a device where the current carrying channel is an organic material. Complementary doesn't mean what we give to each other when we appreciate one another, but instead it means a set of devices or a pair of devices when one's on, the other's off, and vice versa. And that has some strengths that I'll talk about in just a moment. Ambipolar, again, has nothing to do with mental illness and refers instead to a complementary device that is enabled by a single material and actually a single transistor and the control between purely on and purely off or P and N type is done via the voltage settings or the bias. And mobility, I'm sure most of you are um, familiar with mobility, but depending on whether you're an electrical engineer or a chemist, we might define it in different ways. And for us, it's simply the proportionality constant, a key proportionality constant between voltage and current. So, when we talk about mobility, typically we're comparing our devices, our transistors, to existing devices, and where we compete is with amorphous silicon rather than mainstream silicon. And typically we define that comparison, we have defined it via mobility, but we start to look at air stability, input voltages, power supply voltages, and other parameters that define the transistor's competitiveness with amorphous silicon, which is its closest neighbor. Um, the graph that you see here is simply a ratio between voltage and current and the transistor's behavior. High mobilities imply a higher current for the same input voltage. If we chase the digital people, the digital people and digital world, and most people will tell you that the world is digital, but no matter what we do, the natural world will remain analog, so there will always remain a role for analog circuits in the world. The digital world is typically driven by speed. It's all about speed, and speed has cousins, power and power supply, that determine how fast you can go. Um, typically, nowadays, one of the problems with going faster is the faster you go, the hotter you get. And if you go hot enough, you end up with smoke rather than a computer. <laughs> so we're equally driven by speed as power supply considerations and power dissipation. Complementary transistors address one of these power considerations that when you're completely on with one transistor, the other transistor is completely off, implying that there's zero standby power dissipation. So complementary devices not only enable greater speed, they also enable us to operate on a much smaller piece of real estate, whether it be silicon or some other substrate. So when we go with lower power through complementary devices, we can go even smaller by using ambipolar devices. But the big problem with ambipolar is if these devices enable us to make a complementary circuit in a much smaller space, we have to be careful that we don't dissipate so much power that again, we get a puff of smoke rather than a working device. So the when we talk about organic field effect transistors and related work in the STC, hey, I only got six minutes out of that. Okay. Is that a five back there? Okay. I see one, but we'll go for five. <laughs> Ambipolar transistors in the digital world make sense when we can make them small. And small means can we physically make them small and can they operate in a small piece of real estate? And when we say, can they operate in a small space, we mean, will they blow up? Or they, can they dissipate enough heat that they remain functional? So last slide, 
Societal impacts of this project area, certainly flexible electronics, transistor yoga. It's getting very popular nowadays. People want their monitors to roll up so they don't have to haul them around in straight casings. Apparently there's a new fashion trend for flexible monitors. <laughs> and more seriously, flexible electronics also allow us to be in places that we've never been before. So if you've never worn clothing that's infiltrated and impregnated with transistors, the day is coming where you'll be able to do that. And your clothing will tell you when you're too nervous in a presentation and you really need to use more deodorant. Or it may do something more serious on a battlefield such as say, I'm sorry, you've been hit with a bullet. You need to go take care of this immediately. <laughs> I'm being a little facetious, but I think as we go with flexible electronics, we expand our application base far beyond what we've seen before with silicon. Environmental impact for organic devices is potentially much smaller than for conventional silicon devices, both on the incoming end in producing and the outgoing end. Not only to many organic materials have reduced environmental health impact, and if you're familiar with waste electronics recycling, it's a serious issue now in developing countries, but also they have a shorter half-life, meaning <coughs> they go away faster than inorganic materials. Um, our Advances in manufacturing, as you make devices flexible, you allow roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing rather than wafer-to-wafer -wafer manufacturing. And you also now have the exciting possibility in your own office of having one printer to print your sheets of paper and one to print your afternoon electronics. While typically we may wait in prototyping phase three to four months to fabricate with conventional silicon. So those are just some of the societal impacts, and I'll close here so that I can recover our schedule. And thank you very much.